Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the biggest thing that you're doing wrong that is just totally screwing up your grades and your study system. Let's get into it. So if you clicked on this video, that means that you either are studying more hours than you want, not getting the grades you want, both, or you're just like curious. And really today's video, I'm gonna walk you through a system where you can say, I'm doing that correctly or I'm completely bombing this because this is a video I would've wanted when I was a first year medical student where I was studying 10 hours a day and barely getting any sleep and just hoping that I can make it through. And so if you're struggling the same way I was when I was a first year medical student, then this video is for you. Now the bottom line, the biggest problem that most students have what their study system is an issue with fragmentation. And to really help make sense of what fragmentation means for an optimal study system, it's better to understand kind of what most students do wrong. Now, I've learned this through my own personal experience by being a really bad medical student my first few months, as well as working with students who have just been struggling through our one-on-one -on -one coaching programs, which if you guys are interested, should be linked down below, but really being able to see from an observer point of view, as well as my own experience of saying, it doesn't really make sense how you go from here to here, here to here, and then expect yourself to do really well on the exam. Most students will be exposed to information through a lecture or syllabus. That's kind of the classic starting point, but then how they go from their lecture to something they can use to help review and retain information before the exam is pretty fragmented from student to student. I'll give you a few examples and you can tell me if this is something you're doing. A lot of students will go to lecture, write their notes or type their notes on an outline, and then they either review it on their night or they'll forget about it. Ideally, will come to those notes as the test gets closer and closer. But from the time that they spend creating those notes, there was really nothing effectively done until they had that oh beat moment before an exam. On a similar note, there are some students who'll say, okay, I am going to write notes on a PowerPoint as I'm watching lecture. And then when they go home, they're gonna review the PowerPoint over and over and over again. But every time I ask a student that I coach and saying, how much did you actually remember from that PowerPoint when you walked away? Most of them say, honestly, actually, like not very much. And then they may come back to those PowerPoints before their quizzes and tests and then wondering why their retention is really not that crystal clear or confident. And as a third example, sometimes I have students that say, you know what, screw lecture. I'm just gonna watch these videos from this high yield resource or company that I paid a resource for and then take notes on like a high yield resource or my notebook. And I ask them, okay, like, well, okay, that sounds good. How often do you come back to your notes that you create? And they'll say, eh, honestly, not very much. And so you can start to see this theme of how ineffective students will get presented information, put it into a sense that feels very natural, but then never really use it into something that they can continually review over and over again. And even when I meet students that say, oh, I do review my PowerPoints from the lectures each day or my notes each day, my retention is simply not there. And the biggest problem there is that again, you're fragmented. You learned your information, you basically took that information and you put it into something you can't review without being very passive about it. There's no question, there's no review, there's no assessment of how well you know this piece of information versus that piece. And so before we get into the solution, ask yourself if you're doing this on your day-to-day -day studying. Ask yourself, are you being presented information and putting into a form that's not really helping your long-term retention? If so, you're likely wasting time because the amount of time it takes you to gather the information is taking too long. And unfortunately, retention that you have down the line is not that high. And so the solution of fragmentation is to ask yourself, how can you go from information being presented to being created in a format where information can be tested. So for example, the most optimal situation would be if you went into lecture and then listened or read your notes, and then your professor says, here are 20 practice questions that if you know it, then you understand this lecture. Unfortunately, that is not a common practice. And so students will then try to fill notes and then eventually go to some kind of practice questions or quizzing themselves to be able to say, okay, I understand this. And even if there is a source of practice questions that you may have from either a paid resource or an institution provides you, a lot of us just fill the steps from information being presented to being questioned on those information with just a lot of stuff in the middle, with outlines, with videos, with group studying. And it just takes so much of our time because we hope that it makes our grades on these practice questions look better. But in reality, the most efficient method would be to be taught something, be tested, review your mistakes, and then have some system where you can avoid making those mistakes in the future. A few solutions that I suggest a lot of to my coaching students is to avoid fragmentation. If you do take notes, take your notes in the form of questions. That way, if you really need to review your lecture, you can say, can I do all of these questions from the lecture when I was listening? Instead of saying, hypertension is treated by these five medications, you can say, what five medications can you get for hypertension? If you can see that on your notes saying, I know the answer to all that, then you can move forward. But if you don't, then you can go back to your slides and saying, what are those three extra medications that I did forget? And so now you've created a system where you're taking notes in the form of questions, the form of quizzing. Again, you're testing yourself. And then if you do have a source of practice questions that your institution gives you or that a high yield resource gives you, it's also adding to the questions in itself. And so now you've already started created this very natural and efficient flow of information being presented to you 
to information quickly being tested by yourself as you're creating notes. And the last bit of wrinkle that can really make a study system super efficient is now you go from information being presented to information being tested and then having a system saying, okay, whenever I do miss something, I'm going to either put it into a flashcard, into a, a, like an actual physical flashcard, into a, a Word doc of all the things that I miss. And then I have to come back to this like for 10 minutes a day, for 30 minutes a day, for one time on the weekend, every single Saturday you pick. But now essentially saying, all right, Lux, you're gonna learn something. You're gonna test yourself based off of the notes you create in the form of questions, um, or just immediately jump into practice questions. If you do miss something, you're going to create a Word doc of everything you miss or an Excel doc of everything you miss, and then you have to review it. Then I make sure I don't make my same mistakes. I'm learning stuff, getting tested, and making sure I don't make my same mistakes. And you keep repeating this process. You can imagine as you get closer and closer to test day, you have made so many more mistakes versus the student who went to lecture, wrote down their notes, never really used their notes to test themselves, and then freaked out when they had two or three days left before exam day, or as most of us know in college, which is like cram session over the night, you don't ever give yourself a true opportunity to build that confidence of saying, I've made this one mistake on this one topic eight times. If this topic was to show up on the actual test day, I know I'd be able to confidently answer it correctly. But to really have that luxury of confidence going into tests, you have to go from a fragmented system to one that says information is going to be presented, information is going to be created in a way that it easily can now be tested on versus something I just kind of pass the review. And then have some system where you can say, everything I do miss, I'm going to avoid missing in the future. I'm gonna review all of this over and over again. I'm just gonna repeat the cycle over and over and over again. And that confidence will increase, your retention will increase. And then suddenly, just suddenly, just because I've done this so many times, and again, if you guys are interested in the one-on-one -on -one coaching program, you can just see some of the results that some of our students start to see after we create the system for them, which is my time suddenly increases. I'm reading books. People are asking if I'm in medical school or if I'm in college. And that's simply because you just took out all of that fluff in the middle that really wasn't helping with your final grade, although you thought you did. And really you go from being taught being tested, retention improving over time, and then boom, you're just a little bit more relaxed, a little bit smarter, and then things just become a little bit more natural. But that guys is kind of your step-by-step -step system on how you basically make a perfect study system for you. I didn't specifically talk about one study strategy that will work for me and will definitely work for you because that's not true. But the real question is, how can you go from getting to that study strategy that really works for you as quickly as possible and then avoid making those mistakes as much as possible so that way when you go into quiz and test day, that confidence is always there regardless of what study strategy got you there. Now, like I said, after listening to that, if you're like, oh, I can see opportunities where I'm being inefficient, I can be more efficient and I want to see how that process will work for me. If you want to see what results our old coaching students have gotten or our current ones, just after one or two coaching calls, click the link down below to just be able to see the results of our Medic Knight students. And then if you're like, eh, I don't really have the time or luxury of having a one-on-one -on -one coach, but I want to really be able to do this myself, then check out the Level Up Your Setting program where essentially we do this on a three-week basis. Instead of somebody individually walking you, you can then make those decisions yourself. If you're not quite ready to invest from some stranger on YouTube, no worries. Check out this video right here on how to study in medical school step-by-step and hopefully that video will help you out as well as our entire study playlist I'll also link down below full of videos that we made for you here at the MD Journey over the past few years on how you can get those better grades but doing it with less time and most importantly with the less stress. But that guys is how to improve the biggest issue with your study system. If this video did help you hit that like button down below really just smash it two three apparently you have to hit it on an odd number because I guess if you hit it and then hit it again it just unlikes your like. So hit it three times or five times or seven times or eleven if you're a true follower but most importantly to me is I make this video personally to try to help you. So if this video did help you, possibly there's somebody out there that's just looking for the study tips that really will make their grades and their time efficiency improve. So if you're hitting that like button, maybe it increases the chance that this video gets in front of their face on the YouTube algorithm. And like always, if you're new to this channel or if you've just been lurking around, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, join the community and be notified when new videos like this one go out on a weekly basis. And before we close off, if you do have more questions, my friends, feel free to drop them in the comment section, but also consider checking out the Q&A link that's in the description. Basically, if you're like, I really wish Lux would just answer my question personalized and send me a video response to it, then if you go into that survey, you can drop your email and then as many questions you want to ask, I'll make a video response when I have a second um, to you. And then if I feel like the video is going to help other students out, then I'll also release it for the mass public and I can keep you anonymous. But again, this is one way where I can interact with you guys and also help more people who may have the very same question that you did. So if you guys are interested, check out the Q&A link down below. And again, be patient, but I promise you I'll get to the question if it's something I can feel I can answer for you. But with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching to the very end of the video. Thank you for your support. Hopefully I was a little help to you guys in your journey. Thanks for always being a part of mind. If you did enjoy this video, check out this video right here on how you can use Anki like a pro and this video right here on how you can learn to study in medical school step by step. Hopefully you guys enjoy these and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace my friends.